Hi there, it's Bernard Breyer and I thought I'd make a video today reviewing one of my favourite tobaccos and that is Bell's Three Nuns, the iteration by McBaron. Um, this is a tobacco that has a history that goes back a really really long way and so uh, people are quite opinionated about this blend. Um, it's also sort of um, being such an old blend it's also got all sorts of um, sort of colourful stories regarding the licensing of the name and the the ingredients and recipes and so so on and so forth which means that um, for us who are in the UK the Bell's Three Nuns that we can buy um, for, as a sort of um, over-the-counter blend is um, is not what McBaron produce. Um, now, in my opinion, that that um, over-the-counter blend that we get here is um, it just doesn't compare to the blend produced by McMarron. Um, what McMarron produce is not, the, however, like the original. It's a um, Virginia and Dark Fire Kentucky blend, whereas the original was a vapor. Um, but it has got a lot in common with the original blend. Um, so I will pack my pipe and crack on with my review. I've got very little le left. I sell her a lot of Three Nuns, um, but that's all kept at my parents' house, uh, where I've got a bit more storage space. Um, so actually, no. I, I'll discuss. I'll discuss the blend a bit while I've got it out here. Um, it's blended and manufactured by McBaron currently, and in the packaging, it comes in one and three quarter ounce tins. Um, so that's fifty grams. Uh, now, as I said, it was originally a vapor, but this is a vapor. And it consists of dark fired Kentucky, Virginia, and I think some Brazilian leaf as well. Um, it supposedly has no added flavouring, you know, it's, it's supposed to be a, a straight tobacco, not an aromatic. I think some people who've reviewed this blend detect a slight topping, perhaps. I think. Uh, it depends for me very much on on my smoke. Sometimes I'm convinced it's it's a straight tobacco blend. Sometimes uh, I also get a hint of some sort of additive, but you know it uh, it would never be classed as an aromatic. Um, now, a long time ago, um, back when uh, Bell's Three Nuns really was made by Bell's in Glasgow, um, the they used to do a sister blend called Three Nuns Imperial, I think it was, or something along those lines. Um, it's supposed to be leaves from across the, the British Empire. And it used to have a, uh, a slogan, that blend, um, the tobacco of curious cut. And the same is true of the original, and it's something they've continued today. It's a sort of loose spun coin, and they're, they're, unlike, say, something like... Um, Peter Stockerby's Luxury Bullseye Flakes, which are large, perfect, um, circular coins. These are these are quite irregular, often loose and have fallen to bits. I'm not sure how much you'll see, but um, there are other reviews on YouTube where they go into details of the cut of the this uh, tobacco. I think Stuff and Things um, does a really good review, and he, he talks in depth about the cut. Um, so yeah, uh, now some people talk about stacking these coins in your pipe. I I uh, rub them out. I've never had much success stacking. Um, another thing to note about this tobacco is that it is, uh, I find, pretty dry. It comes quite dry in the tin and dries out quickly once the tin is opened. It's, it's a good idea to jar it up right away. But, um, you know, different tobaccos are designed to be smoked in different ways. And I, I've always um, found that with Three Nuns, it, it's, a, it's a tobacco you just smoke a bit drier. So 
don't get put off by it or, or worry that perhaps your tin has been compromised when you crack open the new tin to discover some pretty moistureless tobacco inside. Um, I, I was quite concerned when I first bought a tin of Three Nuns, but it's, it's quite normal. Um, today I'm going to be smoking it in my African Meerschaum Bent Billiard. I found of all my pipes, Three Nuns works very well in this one. I think I get the most out of the flavour here. Though sometimes, if I, uh, especially if I'm doing something else, working um, on my uh, projects for university seems to be taking up most of my time at the moment, um, I can get a little bit caught out by this pipe and this tobacco and get a bit of, a bit of bite. Uh, but that's everyone's experience varies when it comes to that sort of thing. So I'm just going to pack up a bowl. And pop the rest of the backy in the t jar. Now, um, I think the way I'm going to sort of go about this review um, is to follow the uh, follow the. The kind of uh, same setup that Tobacco Reviews has on their website because I think it's something we'll be most familiar with. Um, so uh, I'll talk about strength and um, flavouring, taste, room, the, the same criteria um, as that website has. Um, but I'll add nicotine strength because strength on their website is a bit of a funny one it's sort of strength of flavor and strength of nicotine combined to make its own category and I've always thought that was a bit vague so I'm going to split that up um, but let's uh, let's let's like this Now something I find with Three Nuns is um, the charring light is um, particularly tobacco-y and that might sound a bit silly but um, I never smoked cigarettes um, properly um, before I started smoking a pipe. I've only ever been a pipe smoker. But non-smokers have this sort of preconceived notion of what tobacco would smell and taste like and I find Three Nuns is very typical in the charring light and that doesn't sound like a good thing um, well it might to some of us but um, in truth it, it it does turn into a very very lovely smoke once, once lit I am right at the end of my stock of open three nuns and um, this is probably on the dry side so the, st the stats the stats for this blend um, strength and that's uh, referring to strength of flavour I gave a medium it's got quite a robust flavour but nothing overpowering um, nicotine strength I gave a medium too sometimes when I smoke three nuns I'm tempted to give it a medium mild mild to medium and sometimes I'm tempted to give it a medium to strong um, it really really varies sometimes I get a bit of a hit and other times I don't detect it really um, so it's uh, earned itself just a plain old medium on the nicotine strength. Uh, now, 
I've already discussed the kind of added flavouring thing. So for flavouring, I've given three nuns very mild. There's not really anything there, but once in a while, it's just a hint of, a hint of something, you know, some kind of, some kind of flavour. I don't, some sort of additive perhaps. But don't worry, there's no sort of, you know, nothing to make it aromatic, no cherry or vanilla, nothing like that. It's a very natural tasting tobacco, and so if there is any flavouring, very mild. They, I think uh, McBaron claim there isn't, so none would be a, uh, an appropriate awarding for that category as well. Now for taste, despite giving strength of flavour a medium, taste, I give full, and my reason for that is that the the taste of this tobacco blend it leaves a it leaves a strong impression on the palate it's quite a robust smoke um, yet is in no way overpowering so it's a bit of a contradiction there and that's part of what draws me to it and why I like it so much It's one you should probably smoke gently, I say, bellowing smoke. Um, and when smoked gently, you can really get a lot out of uh, the natural sweetness of the Virginias. If you smoke it a little harder, um, I, I find it's almost got a sort of herbal uh, taste and aroma. Um, it's quite pleasant on the, the retrohale through the nose. As for room note, I have to say it's not the best. Um, if I've smoked this one early in the day in the in the flat I share with my girlfriend, she'll get home later in the day and she knows I've smoked. And that I, I don't say that for every tobacco. And it's not just that; it's a sort of heavy, clingy tobacco smell. Um, it's not got the best room notes, and so I gave it tolerable, but um, I might even award it a sort of tolerable to strong for room note. It's not the best. Well, that by no means makes it unpleasant while you're sitting smoking it. I say quite selfishly, <laughs> with little consideration um, for others around me, though I've currently got the place to myself. You know, I wrote um, up a, a review for this about three years ago on TobaccoReviews.com. I thought I'd just read a little bit from what I wrote then because I think I summed it up quite well. Um, what I said was, Upon lighting the bowl, one is hit with an initial sweetness which augments and diminishes but stays present throughout the smoke. A little further down the bowl, the blend becomes more robust and the sweetness of the Virginias becomes more of a background note. A perique-like spiciness, which I'm guessing is offered by the Kentucky, begins to compete with the aforementioned sweetness as the smoke develops more of a body. Over time, however, the spiciness and the sweetness appear to blend together, creating a complex flavour full of nuance. My advice for three nuns would be to smoke it slowly as to gain as much from the natural sweetness of the tobaccos as one can. The blend is full of flavour but not overpoweringly strong and whilst nicotine is noticeable it never threatens to have too much of a presence. This tobacco is an enjoyable, complex and thought-provoking smoke. I wrote a little end note saying Note, since writing my original review, I feel I should add that this tobacco dramatically improves having been cellared for a year or more. If smoked new, it doesn't burn with the, all of the characteristics that make it one of my favourite smokes. I'd urge anybody interested in smoking three nuns to age their tobacco before unsealing the tin. 
Yeah, that, that end note is a very good point, actually, and I ha I'm surprised I haven't mentioned it. Um, I don't smoke... I don't smoke Three Nuns Fresh. I have done, and I don't get what I don't get much out of it. It has to be aged for me to really enjoy it. Um, now I think that's because I um, I crave the natural sweetness of tobacco when I. My camera just uh, ran out of battery, so I've had to charge it up. Um, takes a little while. And it's given me an opportunity to smoke further down this bowl of three nuns. And uh, it's been a really pleasant smoke. Um, very smooth. Um, nice interplay between sweet and savoury notes coming through. I was just explaining that I I uh, really go for that kind of natural sweetness um, you know the natural sugars in, in tobaccos coming through um, it's not that I don't like sweeter aromatics but the, um, I suppose the difference um, have you ever had a an art an artificial sweetener um, it, in food or in your coffee or something, and it's got a strange sort of sweet aftertaste that fills your mouth, as opposed to a sweetness while you're actually taking a sip, as opposed to um, sugar, which is a a more natural product. Um, that that difference between an artificial sweetener and sugar is very much the difference I find between the added sweetness in an aromatic and the sweetness you get from a natural, naturally sweet tobacco, often, you know, a Virginia based tobacco. Um, and, and I really like that. And there are tobaccos I've smoked which offer that better than Three Nuns. But what's interesting about Three Nuns and, and what I really like about it is that it, there's an interplay that I just said it, between sweet and savoury notes as you smoke your way down. Uh, some people refer to two kinds of um, Virginia flavour when you smoke. Uh, the, the sweeter Virginias and the, uh, the sort of bready Virginias, that, that bread-like taste. Um, some people talk of the kind of the light grassy style and the the kind of more malty bread like style of Virginia. Um, now Three Nuns is definitely more malty bread like than light and grassy, though it does have a, a hint of the light and grassiness. And there's a there's a back and forth between a sweet note and a more savoury note, and, and that makes for a really interesting but enjoyable smoke. Um, it's one of the reasons it's, it has been since I first discovered it years ago now. Um, one of my favourite blends. I was um, just saying other other blends I like for for their natural sweetness um, and blends that age well. Um, I quite like uh, more traditional English style mixtures, like uh, like Squadron Leader or Skiff Mixture by Samuel Goweth. Skiff mixture maybe a little more. It, they age well and give a really nice sort of sweetness while also giving you that, that Latakia smokiness. So Latakia is not present here. It's, it's a bit of a purer taste it, with three nuns. Um, but I enjoy it still. Um, another tobacco I, I've been enjoying immensely is um, uh, Red Rappery by Rat Race. That's that's a really good uh, smoke. That's got a bit of Cavendish in it as well, which adds to the sweetness. Um, but it's not a, like a, an aromatic or anything. It, it's, it, flavours haven't been applied to the black Cavendish. So yeah, 
Uh, this is a, this is a really good blend. I read my description to you, and I've um. had a little bit more time to reflect. On the smoke since my camera died on me. But you know, every cloud has a silver lining. And whilst my uh, video won't be done in one take, uh, I'm in a much better position to comment. I mean, I, I've smoked this blend many, many times, but you often need to really remind yourself of the experience as you work your way down a bowl. I always talk about this craving for um, natural sweetness. I know Bradley at Stuff and Things um, is the opposite, and he prefers to smoke uh, much more savoury tobaccos. I think his you know, his famous favourite Elizabethan mixture by Dunhill, now Peterson. Which I've smoked and didn't get on with too well. It, it is a starkly savoury smoke, but he likes three nuns. There's a sort of a... Comfort, I would describe. It's a comfortable smoke. It's a sort of sit back in your chair, reflect a bit on where you are in life. Um, and that brings me on to the last bit of my video. Um, having, having done my review and commented on this tobacco, I'd like to shout out to Peddling Piper. Um, the other day I, I just completed a, an essay for my, uh, for my master's degree and I, I don't know, I, I wasn't happy with the conclusion to be honest and I, I'm somebody who's always been drawn to nature, to taking walks out in, in woodland and and he, he, he often he posts very regularly little short videos. Unlike me, I, I post rarely, and my videos tend to be on the longer side. It's these little short videos, and they're, they're a real joy to watch. And he immerses you in his, in his hobbies. Um, I believe he, he's quite an accomplished fisherman, and he makes rods um, and other you know, angling paraphernalia. He smokes his pipe, and he smoked many blends I, I enjoy. I think he tends to favour a Lakeland-style blend, and that's not that's not uncommon in the UK. A lot of the uh, more seasoned British pipe smokers uh, tend to smoke Lakelands. But, it, you know, smoke a bit of this and a bit of that. Anyway, I, I, I sort of... Um, I left a comment on one of his videos. It was a bit of a cry for help, really. I just was like, look, a bit of a wretched place. I'm always, you know, stuck down with work. My mind is always on architecture, and, and I really would like to live a simpler life. And he gave me, um, he gave me some advice. You know, just told me to hang on in there, ride it out, and. Um, you know, but not to let go of the things that matter to me. And so, um, I'll leave a link in the description to his channel because I, I just really like his videos. Uh, it, it's escapism for me. Um, and because they're short, they're not too much of a distraction from the busyness that is my life currently. Um, I sound like I'm in a, you know, going through turmoil. It's, it's not all bad. I, I absolutely love what I do, but, uh, you know, it, it takes its toll. This, the intensity of my studies currently, and also the intensity of life. You know, um, without going too off topic, it's quite hard. I think are a lot of people my age at the moment to find their way in life. Property prices are through the roof, and 
it's just I suppose it, I've always been naturally a bit of an optimist but it, it's I'm finding it hard to be optimistic about the future and um, you know it it's nice to escape and I've been doing so by looking at his videos I think they're really nicely done they're simple he just turns on the camera has a word or two about something he's smoking or something he's been doing really nice videos and if you haven't checked out his channel do because it's, it's really good stuff um, it, it sort of reminds you what this is all about really this, um, you know taking a breather and doing something you love and I think that's very important if you're living life and you're not having any time doing the things you love then perhaps you need to reflect you know are, are you living life the way you want to. When will you have time to do what you love most? Um, and as I love this tobacco so much, <coughs> smoking a bowl of three nuns is a, a really good way for me to take some time out. Um, I haven't posted a video in a while and this is a little break I'm just taking. Um, you know, since I've handed in that essay the workload at universities eased up a bit and it's nice to sit down smoke and talk to you about um, a tobacco I like and um, this is my first proper review I've done a first impressions before but this is my first attempt at a proper review I hope you got something out of it um, until I next uh, find the time to make another video I hope you all enjoy your smokes and that you're all doing well and yeah go and check out Peddling Piper's channel really good. Alright, cheers.